What's up, y'all? Welcome back to part two of two for my PC retro gaming with Laka videos. In the previous video, I showed y'all how I fixed the broken non-working PC before you here and was able to boot up to Laka, a retro art looking operating system for retro gaming. In this video, I'm gonna show you the steps of installing Laka onto the internal hard drive from start to finish, including loading the BIOS and the ROM so that you can start retro gaming. So stick around. So the first step is we gotta download the image for Laka. The website is listed here. If you come here, you'll wanna get the correct operating system and the correct device for your Laka install. So for us, we're gonna choose generic PC and we're gonna choose the 64-bit image files. Depending on your device, you'll wanna grab the one that is appropriate for you. After downloading the Laka file, you'll, you can hit next here so that you can download a program called Etcher. Etcher will allow you to burn that image onto your USB device. So once you've downloaded it, go ahead and plug in your USB and open up Etcher and select your image that you just downloaded and then choose the drive that has your USB on it. From there, you just hit flash and Etcher should start its process and burn the image that you downloaded onto your flash drive. This process should take no more than five to 10 minutes depending on how fast your PC is. But once the image is done copying to your USB flash drive, then you can go ahead and eject the USB and then plug it back into your machine so that you can boot up from it. From the boot up screen, what you'll wanna do here is press tab so that you can go into the installer mode. If you type in installer, it will, instead of booting from the USB drive like we did last time in the previous video, it will actually take you into the installer menu where we'll have the option to install Laka onto the internal hard drive. So from here, you'll choose install Laka and then make sure that that's the internal hard drive that you wanna install it to. This is our 60 gigabyte SATA hard drive, so we'll say yes. Uh, it's gonna ask you to confirm because it's gonna wipe everything on that hard drive. So make sure that you don't have anything on there that you wanna keep. So we're gonna go ahead and start the installation here. And once it's all done, go ahead and reboot the system. Upon rebooting, you'll want to take off the USB flash drive so that it can boot from the internal hard drive. And if all goes well, you'll notice here that we got our Laka operating system that we boot directly into. And this here is just a quick overview of all the different systems that Laka is capable of running. I'm not going to go through every single one of them with you guys here, but if you take a look at the list of emulators, you probably have a little bit over 60 cores that you can choose from. So we're going to go ahead and just scroll through here so that you can get a sneak peek at what the system is capable of. And after that, I'm going to show you how you got to configure your system so that you can copy ROMs onto it and um, be able to load and play retro games. So before we go any further, I uh, wanna mention that you'll wanna set up your Wi-Fi so that we could turn on the Samba network share. That's how you're gonna copy files to your Laka operating system. So make sure you set up your Wi-Fi first and then you'll wanna go to services and then enable Samba. Once that's enabled, you'll wanna get on another computer in this case, we're using Windows 10 here. Open up your settings and then go to control panel. You'll need to enable the Samba on Windows 10. So by going to programs and features and then turning on features for Windows, you'll wanna make sure you turn on SMB 1.0 CFS client. So just check the box and hit okay. After it applies the changes, it'll ask you to restart your computer. So go ahead and do that. Once your computer has rebooted, you are now able to access the Laka system. Make sure it's turned on and it's on your network by typing in uh, 
slash slash l a k k a slash and then that's going to bring you to all your files there will be a roms file a roms folder on your lakta server share so from here you can go ahead and start creating your folders for all your different systems that you'll be using on the lakta uh, operating system so i'm gonna quickly create some folders here and i'm gonna populate those folders with a few games so that we can start testing out lakta um, and you can see how the program works. Now, before we go any further, if you have BIOS files that you want to use, go back into the root of Laka. There should be a folder called System. And from here, you can copy in all your BIOS files so that those systems that you're going to run uh, can operate properly. Certain systems like PlayStation and Dreamcast, they require BIOS files in order to run. So make sure you copy them in. Now that we've got our ROMs loaded to make them populate, you'll want to go over to the far right and choose the option to scan this directory. Um, go ahead and choose the directory that had the ROMs that we copied them to. And once it's done scanning, you'll notice that you'll have um, all your games populated in the main menu, in the main dashboard. So let's go ahead and get into some of the gaming here. We'll start off by testing out Game Boy Advance first. This is Castlevania Circle of the Moon. Uh, one of the greatest Castlevania games ever made um, for handheld. So um, this game really revitalized the Castlevania uh, series uh, when it was released. So you can go ahead and relive this classic. Switching over to another classic portable system. Um, this is emulation on the Game Boy Color. Um, this is a rare Legend of Zelda series that didn't get too much love when it was released since it was at the end of uh, the Game Boy Color's lifespan. This next title needs no introduction. I'm sure a lot of you recognize what game this is. So, you can see that the emulation is pretty much perfect. Even if you have um, original Game Boy games, um, they work real well. So, this machine will help you relive a lot of your childhood memories. Next, we'll go ahead and test out some classic Nintendo. This was uh, Street Fighter 2010. Back before Street Fighter was only available in the arcade, this was how I got my Street Fighter fix. And we got Link's Awakening. Um, one of the Zelda series that was a little more different than what we're used to. Um, first 2D side scrolling Zelda. And from Nintendo, uh, we move up to the Super Nintendo here. Um, this was Super Mario RPG, which had the special graphics card. You can see that the emulation works fine on it, so no problem there. And if we go to the next generation, uh, Nintendo 64, uh, you can see that games like Super Smash Brother, or Smash Brother I should say, uh, works pretty well. No slowdown or anything. Switching systems, um, we'll take a look at Sega Game Gear. Um, Mickey Mouse Castle of Illusion works great. We got Streets of Rage 2 on the Game Gear. And then from there we'll test out some Genesis. Gunstar Hero, one of the most frantic uh, and fun games that I've ever played on the Sega Genesis. In some uh, territory, it was called the Mega Drive. So Sega Genesis was North America's name. Uh, maybe in Europe, they were called the Mega Drive, and in Japan, it was called Mega Drive. This is Castlevania Bloodlines. Really fun game. Great title if you missed it. 
moving on up to something a little more powerful here. Uh, we got PlayStation emulation. Uh, it's Bloody War 2. You can see the sound works great. There's no slowdown. The PlayStation emulation works just fine. And um, just to show you how powerful this machine is, you can um, even play PSP games. Um, the PSP emulation works great. Uh, this is Final Fantasy 1. Uh, the remake or remaster, whatever you want to call it, they changed the sprite on this one. Going back to another classic home console. Uh, we got TurboGrafx-16, also known as PC Engine in some territory. Um, this game is called Thunderblade. It's a uh, shoot 'em up. Uh, very cool and unique game um, where the perspective changes uh, throughout the gameplay. Um, and then we got another classic Splatterhouse here. Uh, oh man, I used to love playing this game uh, whenever I was able to go over to my friend's house after school. I never owned a TurboGrafx-16 when I was younger, so I had to go over his house to play. Now before I finish up this video, I want to show you guys some arcade emulation. Uh, we got Marvel vs. Street Fighter here, uh, which is an arcade classic. So if you're na not able to find these games nowadays, because arcades are pretty much obsolete, set this machine up and you'll be able to relive and replay a lot of these arcade classics. Uh, got Alien vs Predator here. So you can see that the gameplay works really well, the sound works really well. So instead of throwing away that old computer that you got in your closet, go ahead and do this tutorial that I just showed you guys here. So you'll be able to relive your childhood memory. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. If you like what you saw, please consider hitting that subscribe button and also the notification bell so that you know when I upload more videos. I appreciate you guys watching and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.